Hi, I'm Landon with Revere. Today we're going to be going over some of the large components on a Taws trailer. To start out with, we have an adjustable jack at the tongue of the trailer, we have a lunette ring, and we have a ball hitch that can be replaced with the lunette ring to tow behind a standard vehicle. We have a box that houses a 7-pin and a 13-pin trailer lighting harness. We have a tongue toolbox for storage. We have a parking brake. We have our main engine compartment, and we have a engine flush solution tank attached to the front, along with a soap concentrate tank. We have our fuel tank off to the side. At the fuel tank, we have our uh, fuel cap that has a gauge in the top, along with a vent. So uh, before starting the unit, you would want to make sure that this vent is open. And when it's not in use, you'd like this vent to be closed. We have our fuel priming bulb that primes the diesel engine, and then we have our fuel send lines here and our fuel return lines here. We have our burner assembly, and attached to the burner assembly, we have an engine flush reel that is three quarter inch, 65 feet of hose, and we have a compressed air reel. This is our engine flush compartment toolbox. We have a 500 gallon holding tank, and we have our spare tire. At the rear of the trailer, we've got our low flow rinse gun, that is capable of five gallons a minute. We have our foam hose um, with a fire bale style attachment. We have a bracket welded to the hose reel frame for detaching the rinse guns. We have a high flow rinse gun capable of 10 gallons per minute. Attached to the hose reel stand, we have our document canister. We have a 75 foot grounding reel. We have our water fill connection, which is a garden hose fitting. We have our storage toolbox. We have the burner assembly here and there's a fuel filter located inside um, which can be accessed through removing of the hood and we have our engine compartment. The Taws trailer has six D-rings located around the frame. Uh, they can be used to tie the unit down or they can be used for lifting with a crane or a helicopter. At the control panel we have our engine flush pump switch we have our driver's side burner activation switch, and we have our curbside burner activation switch. We have our engine flush sourcing valve that allows us to select between water out of the holding tank and our engine flush solution out of our tank here. And we have our engine flush discharge pressure. Our engine control module has an ignition switch, a tachometer, and a gauge for the hours along with several indicator lights. First one uh, indicating a low voltage scenario or battery failure. We have our glow plug light that is indicating when the glow plugs are on. Uh, we have a low oil pressure warning light. We have a high engine temperature warning light. Our auxiliary one light indicates low water in the holding tank and is designed to prevent the pump from running without water. And auxiliary two is not used at this time. In the engine compartment, we have our diesel engine, we have a battery. We have our main electrical panel, we have our engine flush pump, we have our compressed air holding tank, then we have the engine oil filter, we have the air filter, we do have a belt for the serpentine system on the engine, and we have a belt for the air compressor drive located under this lid. Uh, we have the gearbox located in between the pump and the diesel engine. We have our main rinse pump located here. We have our compressed air pressure gauge located here. We have the back side of our engine control module here. And mounted to the frame, we have the foamer assembly located here. The Kubota engine will run on diesel fuel, which is preferred. Uh, however, it will run on aviation fuel if needed. Inside the electrical panel, we have a set of fuses uh, underneath this removable plastic cover and uh, we have a timer set for the engine flush pump. The engine flush timer is set to five minutes and that is to prevent the engine flush pump from overheating. It is not recommended to run the engine flush pump for longer than five minutes. Now let's go over some of the maintenance items in the engine compartment. We have our coolant overflow tank located here. We have a fuel filter that's in line located here. We have a fuel filter located on the side of the engine and we have a fuel shutoff valve attached to that filter. We have our dipstick to check our engine oil. And in the back, we have our cap pump and the oil sight can be seen from the opposite side of where we're at now. And we have our gearbox and the oil sight is located uh, next to the cap pump. And uh, 
Uh, we have our fill port for our pressure washer pump located here. Now we're going to go over starting the Taws after it's been stored for a long period of time um, or after it's been run out of fuel or run out of water. If the system's been run out of fuel or has been stored for a long time and fuel's just been put into the system, you want to make sure that there's fuel primed to the engine. You can do that by squeezing this fuel primer bulb until you see diesel flowing into the fuel filters and being returned through the return lines back into the tank. Um, you also want to make sure that the vent is opened up on the cap and once you see that fuel's been primed into the filters, the engine will be ready to start. Now that the fuel system's been primed, the next step is to prime water throughout the system. It's important to do this because if the unit is started without water in the pump, it'll damage the plungers inside the pressure washer and um, the pump won't be able to make any pressure and you won't be able to spray water. So with a full tank of water and our engine flush solution tank and soap concentrate tanks full, it's important to open up the ball valves underneath each of these tanks, uh, particularly the main holding tank. There's a large ball valve located near the strainer right underneath the tank. It can be accessed on the passenger side in between the two tires. So with all of our ball valves open and fluid levels full in each tank, we're going to go ahead and turn our ignition from the off position to the run position and that's going to supply power to our engine flush pump which is going to prime our water system. So we'll take the engine flush hose off of the reel and we're going to make sure our source selection valve is at the water position and it's important to make sure that the parking brake is set and the trailer is in a good position to be able to spray water. We're going to turn our engine flush pump on and we're going to open up the ball valve at the end of the hose and allow water to spray. Um, if the system is being primed for the first time, there's going to be a lot of air. So you want to make sure that you run the engine flush pump until you've got a smooth fluid stream of water. And once all the air bubbles have been expelled from the system and you just have a consistent stream of uh, fluid coming from the engine flush pump, Go ahead and shut the ball valve and turn the engine flush pump on and the system has been primed so you can go ahead and start the trailer. Now that the fuel system has been primed and the water system has been primed and now that we've got full fluid levels in all of our tanks, now that we've checked our oil levels in the engine, the compressor, the gearbox and the pump, we've checked our coolant level in the engine, uh, we're now ready to go ahead and start the toss. So first thing we'll do turn our ignition switch from the off position back to the run position. You see all the indicator lights illuminate at first and then just the top three. You'll notice that the glow plug light will turn off after a few seconds. You'll want to make sure that you wait until this light turns off before you start the TOS trailer. Um, this allows the glow plugs to heat the engine block properly. Um, we're in a good position to start the engine and we've set our parking brake so we can go ahead and fire it up. One last thing regarding the engine on the Taws, uh, the RPM has been set by the factory and doesn't need to be adjusted. So once the engine started, it'll run consistently at 3200 RPMs, uh, no matter what kicks on or what's being used. So there's no adjustment for the engine speed, uh, nor is there a need to adjust the engine speed.